Greg LeMond, three-time Tour de France winner. I was incredibly determined, had incredible focus, and I didn't believe anybody could beat me. At 17, I was very clear where I wanted to go. Win the Olympics in 1980, win the professional world championships by the time I'm 22, and Tour de France by the time I'm 25. And I've got the copy of the paper uh, of, of those goals, and I did everything except for the Olympics. An engineer that uh, worked at a carbon fiber company that made tubes had made a bike, and you quickly understand like weight is everything. So in carbon fiber bikes, what you were doing is dropping about two pounds off the bike. A friend of mine, Jim Jennings, he came to me with this three pound helmet, and I said, you couldn't pay me enough. And this is a three pound helmet. You know, really, I'd like to have it like a hairnet. <laughs> three months later, he came back with a, um, a prototype of foam, all, all, the, um, all the aerodynamic vents, and uh, that's how Giro Helmet started. Oakley came up to me and I, I think they had this prototype they were going to come out with and they you know, thought this would be a great sport to introduce a glass like this. And it was a sport glass, a very specific glass. They just wanted to see if I was interested and I was and people don't realize that prior to Oakley coming into the sport, I mean we all raced, I mean literally with dirt and grit in our eyes. I still remember in 86, commentators in France I was wearing the Giro helmet Oakley glasses and the commentators were going, oh my God, what is this guy doing? Look at, this is ridiculous. He looks like a guy from outer space. And then all of a sudden everybody else said, okay, I, you know, I want to use that too. It was awesome how that, how it spread in the Peloton. It's like, it was a functional piece of equipment. Cycling, you have a severe injury, they, they put you out, <laughs> out to retirement. I spent almost two years at the back of the group. I had little hopes and glimmers of getting back to my old level, but it never sustained more than a week. So 1989, you know, I'm, I, I'm finally kind of feeling good. I have no clue if I'm gonna do well in the Tour de France, but I had these bars that I believed you know, without any scientific testing, I, I just knew aerodynamics and I said, these, they're gonna be an advantage. So I'm trading first and second. I mean, I'm battling with my ex-teammate, Laurent Fignon. I take the lead, he takes the lead. And I'm, every day that I go by in the tour, I feel a little bit better. And I might, went from a top 20 goal to a top 10 goal to a week before I said top three. Then I'm like, what the hell? I should be going for the victory. It was down 50 seconds going into the very last stage of the, of the Tour de France. Laurel Finian came up to me the day before the last stage and he uh, patted me on the back. He said, congratulations on your second place. And, uh, and then the irony is that same day, there was uh, uh, an interview talking about the handlebars. He said, you know, I think they restrict the breathing. They're, they're, they don't really seem to add a lot of a huge advantage and uh, we're not gonna use them. And so I was like, this is great. And uh, so I, I used them in the last time trial and, it definitely, I did wind tunnel testing, it definitely made up the eight seconds that I won the tour by. I went from the top of the sport to the bottom, back to the top uh, in a three year period. And that was exciting. And to win it on the last day, sit there waiting, did I win it, did I not win it? And to find out I won it by eight seconds was absolutely, that's the thing that you want to live for again and again and again. It doesn't, it doesn't get better. Thank you.